Hey everybody, today's video is going to be on America in World War I. Here are the key questions for today's video. All right, so uh, before we can talk about America's role in World War I, we have to start by looking at World War I in general. So World War I was originally known as the Great War, uh, because we didn't know there was going to be a second World War, and because it was the biggest war that we have ever seen up to that point. Uh, and so it starts as a conflict among the major European empires. And uh, these are the strongest and most advanced countries in the world other than the United States. And basically what happens is all these countries are doing whatever they can to uh, compete with each other and to get stronger. And because they're all competing with each other, um, tensions build and they, bo both, they all start preparing for war. And one thing that happens is that they start to develop alliances. That is, they set up essentially teams where they each everybody on that team promises to back the other guys up if they ever get sucked into a war. So basically, what we've got is you've got uh, Europe is split into two alliances. One alliance is called the Triple Entente. They're the orange countries on the map there. And that consists of France, Britain, and Russia. And on the other side, basically the other team in this lineup is called the Triple Alliance. And it consists of Germany, Austria, Hungary, and Italy. And so basically Europe is divided into two teams. And what this means is that if there is a conflict between any two countries, it could suck all of the other countries into the conflict. So if Italy picked a fight with France, that would pull all the other powers into the war. But so anyway, in 1914, just such a thing happens. And it, what happens is the prince of Austria-Hungary is assassinated by a Serbian and Serbia is a small country in the southeastern part of Europe. But what's important is that Serbia is allied to Russia. So Austria-Hungary is really angry at Serbia, and they declare war on Serbia. And this kicks off a chain reaction that sucks everybody else into the war. So Russia, who is angry about Austria-Hungary declaring war on Serbia, declares war on Austria-Hungary and on Germany. In response to this, Germany declares war not only on Russia, but also on France, because they know France is allied with Russia. And Germany immediately invades France. As a result of this invasion of France, both France and Great Britain declare war on Germany. And so now you've got the major powers of Europe have all declared war on each other. The only person who stays out is Italy, um, they actually don't go to war, but later they switch sides and fight for France. <coughs> Excuse me. So anyway, America is looking on while this is happening, and they watch as all of the other most powerful countries in the world get sucked into a terrifying war. And at first, America is really glad that they are not a part of it, that they are left out of this struggle. And World War I is the most terrifying war that has ever been fought up to this point in world history. And one of the reasons it's so terrible is because of new military technology that leads to a type of war called trench warfare. And this is a war in which defense is way stronger than offense. And it's largely because of a new invention, which is the machine gun. So because the machine gun is such a powerful weapon, it can shoot hundreds of bullets a minute. Basically, one dude can set up with a big machine gun, and he can mow down thousands of uh, troops. So one dude set up in a well-defended machine gun is basically invincible. So what this means is that both sides just dig big trenches, essentially ditches, and put machine guns all along these trenches. 
and that means that it's essentially impossible to attack. So both sides build trenches, and it's impossible for either side to break through and win the war. So what this leads to is something called total war, where both sides are locked into a death struggle, and they use all of their resources, they use all their manpower and all of their uh, factories and all of their all of their supplies to try and push the other side to exhaustion and win the war. And because total war demands a country to use all of its resources, both sides look to the United States for help. If the United States could supply extra resources to one side or the other, that would mean that that side would have an advantage over the other side. Now remember, the United States at first wants nothing more than to just stay out of this conflict. And Wilson promises that he's going to keep us out of the war. And basically, not only do they want to stay out of the war, but they also want to make money from the war. Because America could make billions of dollars by selling war supplies to the countries who are fighting. And so America sets out to make money off of the war. And one of the things they do is they loan billions of dollars to France and Britain. France and Britain need all the dollars they can to fight back against Germany. And so they borrow money from the United States. Also, America keeps trading with both sides, or at least they want to trade with both sides. So they're supplying guns and ammo and food to the countries that are at war. But the British decide that they don't want anybody to trade with Germany. They decide to cut Germany off with a blockade. And so the British use their big navy to block Germany off. And what this means is that the United States is only allowed to trade with Britain and France. Naturally, Germany is not happy about this, so they try to break the British naval blockade. And they do this with a new and terrifying weapon called the submarine. So the, the German navy is not strong enough to take on Britain. But what they do is they send out submarines also known as U-boats, into the Atlantic Ocean, and they start sinking all of Britain's ships, all of Britain's trading ships. And the idea is, is that if they keep sinking all of Britain's trading ships, eventually Britain will have to stop the blockade. However, this has the side effect of killing Americans. A lot of Americans trade with Britain. So when the Germans sink British trading ships, they also end up killing Americans. And the most famous incidents of this is uh, the sinking of the British ship, the Lusitania, which had over a hundred Americans on it. The Lusitania also had guns and ammo that was going to Britain, so there was a good reason for the Germans to sink this ship. But e either way, Americans are outraged that Germany has just killed 126 Americans. However, Wilson still refuses to enter the war. He says, look, it's not worth it. This is a terrible conflict. Let's stay out of it. However, eventually it proves too much and America ends up entering the war. Wilson can't hold out forever. And there are a couple reasons that the United States joins the war. One is that Germany, after stopping for a little while, continues to sink ships and continues to kill Americans in the Atlantic Ocean using their submarines. And this basically continues to add up and to annoy America more and more. Second is a huge mistake by the Germans called the Zimmermann Telegram. And what happens here is that the Emperor of Germany sends a telegram to Mexico, asking Mexico to declare war on the United States in order to distract the United States from the war in Europe. And Germany promises to give Mexico California and Arizona and New Mexico back if Mexico will fight against the United States. The United States finds out about this telegram and is outraged that the Germans are plotting against them. And another factor that plays into the United States decision to go to war was a revolution in Russia. 
Russia was one of the major powers fighting in the war. There's a revolution that happens that weakens Russia and eventually causes them to drop out of the war. And because of that, it looks like Germany is about to win. Now, the United States doesn't want this because they have loaned billions and billions of dollars to England and France. And if England and France lose the war, they won't be able to pay these billions of dollars back. So as a result of all of these things, the United States eventually decides to declare war, and they do so in 1917, so about three years after the war began. But now that they've entered the war, uh, they have to justify it. They have to say why they think this is a good idea. And uh, the war is very unpopular, so Woodrow Wilson does everything he can to explain why this is a good idea. And the reason he gives is that he's making the world safe for democracy. He says that France and Britain are both democracies, while Germany and Austria-Hungary are both uh, monarchies. And this is sort of true. It's not totally true. Um, Germany and Austria both did have some democratic elements in their society. Uh, but anyway, that's what Woodrow Wilson says. He says we're fighting to protect democracy from uh, dictatorships and from Germany and Austria. Also, Wilson doesn't really do this, but other people do this, and that is to demonize Germans. Uh, during the war, they make Germany look like it is a barbaric land that is destroying the innocent and uh, cultured victims of France and Britain. So the United States needs to step in and stop the barbarians from destroying civilization. So in order to win the war, the United States makes some pretty big changes. The, big, the first big one is the draft. Uh, this is where adult men are forced to enter the army. And the United States drafts 2.7 million men. And they are enlisted into the army, and a good number of them are shipped over to Europe to fight in the trenches. Also, because of this, there, I, there, or because of the war, there is almost a complete halt to immigration. Most of the people who were coming to the United States were coming from Europe, and now nobody can get over uh, because of the war that's going on. This combines with an increased demand for industrial production. The factories in the United States have never been busier. They're producing more steel and more guns and more bullets than ever before. And because there are no more immigrants, somebody needs to go up and fill these empty factory jobs. And what happens is most, a lot of these jobs are filled by black Southerners. Black Southerners who are tired of segregation and oppression in the South migrate North to take the open factory jobs. And this leads to a huge increase in the a number of black people living in Northern cities. This is very important and we'll talk more about this. It's known as the Great Migration in another video. Also, the United States government takes measures to control the economy. They directly control the production of war materials like weapons and steel, and also the, the production and the prices of foodstuffs to make sure that there's enough food to go around for everybody during the war. Largely as the result of U.S. involvement in the war, the uh, Entente powers, that is Britain, France, the United States, win the war in 1918. Uh, armistice is declared, which is essentially a, a ceasefire. Germany is unable to keep fighting because they can't keep up with the combined resources of Britain, France, and the United States, and so they ask for peace. The United States basically can take credit for this. If it wasn't for the United States, there was a good shot that Germany would have won. But when the United States entered, it was pretty much a sure thing. That the, United, that the Entente powers would prevail. And so there is a peace conference set up in France to decide what's going to happen as a result of this war. So all the leaders of the world, including Woodrow Wilson, travel to Paris in order to negotiate this peace. And Woodrow Wilson has a vision. He is a highly educated man, and he has a sort of historical view of what the future should look like. And he sums up his idea for the future in what he calls the 14 points. And we don't need to go into all of the 14 points, but 
uh, we're going to look at three of the most important of the 14 points. The first is free trade between nations. Wilson believes that if we can all trade with each other and work together to share our resources and to get the best of each country's products to each other, this will reduce the chances of future wars. So he calls for the reduction of tariffs and other barriers to trade. Second, he calls for something called the self-determination of peoples. This is where each nation should be allowed to decide for itself on its own system of government. So he believes that each people should get to pick the government that they have. Uh, this, of course, means that the defeated Germans would get to pick their style of government, but it also implies that all of the people ruled by empires around the world would get to pick their own system of government. And last of all, he calls for something called the League of Nations, which is uh, a basically an organization where all of the major nations of the world would come together and would work together to ensure peace. That way, if there was ever any nation that was starting to cause problems, those nations could work together to prevent another great war. So the European leaders who hear Wilson's ideas reject a lot of them, but they do accept the League of Nations. However, they also demand that Germany be severely punished for the war. And so, as a result, Germany is not allowed to join the League of Nations, and they also have to pay billions of dollars in war damages to the other countries. And to make matters worse, the United States, after going over there and managing the, uh, the peace conferences, refuses to take part in its own deal. Woodrow Wilson has a stroke, and the U.S. Congress is controlled by Republicans who disagree with basically everything Wilson has just said. So, when it comes time to a vote to decide whether or not the United States will join the League of Nations, Congress rejects it. They say that they are not going to join the League of Nations. So this idea that the United States come up, comes up with is rejected by the United States. And instead, the United States enters a period of isolationism, which is where the United States ignores what's going on in the wider world and basically just worries about its own internal affairs. While this is going on, there are serious problems in Europe. Germany is basically broken because they are forced to pay billions of dollars and they were damaged by the war. Second, all of Europe has massive debts. Uh, they owe billions of dollars to the United States and are not in any position to pay them back. Plus, the United States needs to keep loaning money to the rest of Europe, otherwise the entire world economy could collapse. So as a result of this, many of the same problems that led to World War I are still around. The world is in some ways less stable after World War I than it was before World War I. And a lot of these problems lead directly to World War II, which we will talk about much later in the course. So some of the outcomes of World War I that we'll explore more in later videos. One is international tensions. Germany feels cheated by the peace deal. They felt that everybody was equally to blame for the war. However, they ended up paying for the entire cost of the war. Second, the world economy is very fragile. Basically, the United States is keeping everybody else afloat. And if the United States economy was to mess up, that would drag everybody else down into a terrible economic recession. There are also some serious domestic tensions. There are new racial tensions in northern cities where thousands of black workers have moved but now white workers are coming home from the war and demanding their old jobs back. Second, there's been a growth in women's suffrage during the war. Uh, many women worked really hard to support the war and worked to help soldiers, and now they're demanding a say in the U.S. government. And also there's been a, increasing demands for prohibition, which we're going to explore in depth. But prohibition was at the time when the United States decided to outlaw alcohol in the United States to make alcohol illegal. And one reason for this is that beer was associated with German immigrants and Germany, and Germany became very unpopular during World War I, so people were more likely to want to outlaw alcoholic drinks. So anyway, here are your video goals once again. Please take some time to study these and listen to the video. That way you can do well on your video quiz on Monday.